Aba amezeto, akwete mayanda, ame ya sanza tina. Atamasi. Kwa ta nitasi, kwa ta bema, uku wa maukwa ishi. Flatlander Friday test question by Joel, everybody. <laughs> All right. So here is, uh, I think I have my strategy, but I wanted to run this by you. Okay. I have a spot. It's about 5,000 feet in elevation in the mountains. The There is a herd, heavily uh, cow populated, a very high, a low, so I say low bull to cow ratio. Um, I have seen quite a few cows with a couple spikes, and then I've seen a couple like, you know, four pointers, no reasonable, like youngish bulls, but definitely bulls I would happily take. Um, and I know exactly the contour elevation that they bed down on because I've, I've scouted it. I've bumped into them in season. I know where they're going to be. The problem is that it is a wooded area, but there is no undergrowth underneath these trees so even though you're in a forested area with that lack of undergrowth you can see quite a long distance making a good setup quite difficult so calling in that environment is quite challenging so I'm I'm trying to figure out, and this is this of course this is their just to be clear this is their bedding area right so this is not something they're going to be traipsing through this is where I'm going to be trying to get in within their vicinity yeah and then either try and stalk really quiet in on them which has its own challenges that the nature of the dry pine needle type floor is so loud that for me to to stealthily creep in there is going to be very difficult mm -hmm. so i do want to try and capitalize on calling but i have to be very particular about where i set up so my theory of of like how to hunt these would be to get in there once they've really bedded down probably like one o'clock i'd be heading in there and i'm going to to still hunt it very 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 slowly and glass glass for as long as i can see and really take my time to try and pick out movement antlers ears flicking to try and if i can see the elk before they see me i think i'm definitely going to have the advantage so that would be my strategy and then from there decide on where to set up that i can bring an interested uh bull over to me um where he is not going to see me until uh, I'm within shooting range, which could be very tricky there. So this is the biggest hurdle I'm trying to work around is how to get that bull within shooting range, um, you know, because they're going to stop and scan at a certain point, right? So I need to make sure that when that happens, he's within shooting range. So would you try and stalk in really quietly? Would you use a decoy? Would you try to capitalize on more raking um, would you try rattling? Like, what would your – if you were in that situation, tell me what your thought process would be. And obviously, you're going to be solo. Um, so, yeah. man, I don't know that I would wait all the way. So, I've, um, <laughs> I've been changing my thought process and just – I think you need to be there in the morning, to be honest with okay. you. Before they come to bed. Before they come to bed. Because when the big bull that has the herd of cows, because by the time you get into season, they're probably those young bulls are going to start already gathering cows by that point. And they're those, oh, young, yeah. those young bulls like that are not going to want to come and fight or really test nope. out their dominance, especially when they have cows. Okay. 
So, the so I, I will confirm that with you because I have called, I've just used traditional calling tactics of using lost calf, of using bugles. Those, those young bulls do not want to leave those cows. That's right. Do not want to leave those cows. That's yeah. correct. Um, so the best, the best thing for you to do in that scenario is get there before they are there and just make sure you don't put yourself in between them and their destination. But you need to be close mm. enough to be able to understand exactly where they went and where they stopped because that lead bull is going to be so protective of those cows that he is going to bugle his head off from the time they leave their feeding area until the time they get to mm -hmm. their bedding area. And more than likely, he's going to be following a matriarch cow. And then there's going to be all these cows in between and then him at the very end. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, I, that's pretty standard. Yeah. Yep. So I want to ask you, are, are you bull only or are you prepared to shoot a cow? No, unfortunately, this bull unit only. is, it's a general unit, but it's a bull only. Okay. I, I can take a spike, which I would do. Um, but yeah, it's bull only. Okay. Um, and then you need to judge him when he is calling in the morning. Okay. That's when you need to call. You don't need to go in there and know that the elk are in there and it's one o'clock and they've been bedded down and all of a sudden come in there with your cow call or your bugle or whatever it is that you're going to do. Mm. Um, because, because of the herd dynamic there, they probably know pretty much every elk for sure. Yeah. And yeah. the best thing that you could do is when you go in there and he's calling, let's say you're following the herd and you, you want to have that set up or you want him to come over there to you, you're going to have to do the calf calls. Um, but you got to mm. be, you've got to be prepared to have a cow come over there and check you out as well. Sure. Sure. And then just remember if you yeah. blow the cows up, then you're going to have to send a bugle to let the bull know why the cows yeah. are running okay so just always remember that, that okay yeah and no matter what yeah, every sense. single time that you blow up elk you need to bugle especially if there's a herd because a lot of times the the few elk that you bump the other elk that are with them are just reacting off of their reaction to you and don't really mm. know about what happened. And as soon as you can bark and bugle or, or make a presence of a bull be known why that herd ran off, then it sends a message to the other elk. Oh, it's just an aggressive elk. It's not a human. So would you, so, so my thought process is if, um, if I did bust a bunch of cows without the bull in sight, right? Yeah. But I know he's there. I just don't see him is to throw up like a roundup bugle or would mm. you just throw a challenge bugle, but it would be something with a little more emotion. Right? Yeah. Or, yes, absolutely. That short roundup bugle. Yeah. Um, I was just looking yeah. for my, I thought I had all my calls here a little while ago. I don't know where they're at. It might be in my backpack. Yeah, let me let me let me let me grab mine. Yeah, let me yeah. Do a roundup bugle, yep. and then you let me know what you think. Yeah. Okay. So I would, I would throw something like. Hey, this. before you do this, hold on, hold on. Up there at the top of your screen, can you click original sound for musicians? Can you click that on? Oh. Okay. Do you see that? Where do I? It should no. be up at the top right hand side, or it might be in your, it might be in your audio settings. Then, if you go audio to your settings, yeah, yeah, and then you, there should be somewhere that says, um, yeah, oh, down yeah. at audio yeah. profile, yep. original sound for okay, because that'll keep it. It it, it won't it. bleep you out then, whenever you bugle, because okay. I'm recording this. Yeah. So I would do this. Oh, it's still blurred it out. But yes, real uh, short like that. Let me see if mine with a little with a little bit of a lip ball in between just to give a little you bit don't of even, You don't even have to do that. Just just your voice in no. it. Yeah, just your voice in it. <laughs> Did mine cut out? Mm. No. Okay, good. No, I heard that. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, original sounds for musicians off. Oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, turn that on. I know that's. Uh, I just did. So but mine, it didn't. Mine is up on my top right hand screens. I can just okay, click. Okay, got it. So echo cancellation or there's a couple mm. stereo audio. Hmm. No, under audio settings, it just shows it up as yeah. original sound for musicians instead of zoom background noise, personal audio isolation okay. or whatever. Okay. Yeah, echo cancel cancellation, high frequent or high fidelity yeah. music mode, all those should be turned on. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. So I think even though it still says here, original sounds for musicians is off. That makes no sense because I've turned it on. Oh. Hmm. Does it not give you... Microphone. Where... Oh, that that's weird. Does it not give you the that's option weird, up there where it shows uh, view? You can click the original sound for musicians and it'll turn it off immediately there. And then you can turn it back on. No, it doesn't. It doesn't give it there. Okay. Either way, um, but yeah, man, just that short or oh, is enabled. Okay, uh, wait, noise suppression is in, in is disabled. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, you should hear it now. Cool. Try it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even just that bark bugle. <laughs> yeah okay that short bugle so that short bugle is that roundup bugle and you can even lip ball it if you want <coughs> or <coughs> yeah yeah yep i've just i know that when i've heard elk do the roundup there is a almost uh, screech like quality it's, to th it. that's what adding like your frantic, voice like a, it's very raspy yeah, yeah. raspy yeah yep. yeah you know the other thing too is that i've noticed that depending on different elk there's a lot of different like um uh tones oh dude that they'll that you know this it's it's almost like a person's voice right? it you is get some of it the, is that's exactly yeah. what it is just like the way you talk and the way i talk is so different but we're still six foot four big ass males yeah. white males but we sound <laughs> so different right the elk are yeah. the same exact way like this bull that yeah. could be his brother does not sound anything like him when you really sit there and listen to them bugle they sound nothing alike and that's where this it's... sells so good is because they are hearing a voice that they've never heard before so just the curiosity aspect just that alone will bring them over there to you. It, but So you just have to be careful and understand that when you pique that dude's interest, if you get him to respond a couple times, he's probably sitting over there thinking about your your who, whatever you presented. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and know but that they, the time frame for him to come check you out could be a couple of hours later. He might be going and putting his cows to bed, and when they all start laying down, he might just be like, you know what, I'm going to go check that calf out or whatever, and then he comes over there. See, because I thought about this yeah. last year. I, I, I think my setups and then me bailing from that setup was so impatient that I missed opportunities at Elk last year that I could have capitalized on had I just sat there and let the situation unfold in Elk time, not human you time. You know what, bro? I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that especially the early season, right, when they yes. are more curious, they just – Elk time, man. They're laying there. That's they listen. It. They could lay there for three hours and then decide, you know what? I'm kind of bored. I want to go see what that bull was barking off about down there. And then yep. they walk up. Yep, exactly right. Or, you know, I'm. it's time for me to go get some water. On my way back, I'm going to swing by and see who that is, you know. Um, and it's, don't you think though that don't you think from your experience like I really feel like there is a difference between an elk's level of interest in a call, so a cow call or a bugle, 
and raking. Like I feel like raking is almost like too a little too irritating or a little bit too hard for them to ignore because it's such absolutely. a territorial thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think Well, <clears throat> so that's where so okay, so now we're diving into how I would play this situation, okay? I'm going to get there early. Uh, you already know where they're going to be. You can hear them coming to their destination. And then mm. at, at the point that you think is right when they're getting close, you engage them with either your cow call or your, your bugle or whatever it is. And, and then that's not necessarily with maybe your calf call. Maybe you are asking them to come over and you're persistent and you're, you, you have that urgency in that call. You could have them show up then. But if you're ignored, then it like, let's say I had that calf and then, you know, an hour goes by and the herd never comes over there to me, but maybe he bugled at me to let me know where they were, but never showed up. Now I introduce raking that brings in a whole different scenario that that bull almost yeah. has to come check out because now yes. you've presented yeah. the calf and now all of a sudden without even bugling, now there's raking that's going on. Um, yeah. there's a bull over there with a calf. I know that for sure. Right. So if they yeah. put that together like that, oh, dang, I don't know. I've never heard that calf before, and I don't know who that bull is over there by the raking noise, and I can't tell who he is by his bugle because he's never bugled yet. Dude, you're liable to have a bull come show right up because he might mm -hmm. think that it's one of the insubordinate bulls in his group that is just afraid to be over there making a commotion because he's got a girlfriend now. You know, yeah. those are just kind of the way I, yeah. I kind of put start, you know, I try to put things together like that. Like I, I always yeah. believe that I'm building this certain scenario in my mind and hopefully that's conveying an elk language or the lack thereof, you know, to pique their interest. Um, mm. yeah. Yeah. The, the key, I, I think that's really a solid plan is to try and catch them as long as long as I can get the wind in my favor, which usually is pretty tough in bedding. So I'd have to definitely have to sidewind them, which I'd have to be in the right place. Yeah. So that they weren't coming up towards me when the thermals are still going down. That's right. Um so as long as I can get that right, um that would be pretty good. But pretty you know, from good. that bedding area, you should be able to hear that bull so sounding off from a mile, dude. You know, so you don't necessarily yeah. You shouldn't have to be right there on top of their spot because their spot yeah. could differ by a half a mile every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Today, they yeah. might be a half a mile different than they were, but still be in the same patch. Um, so just it's, always... It's 100%. 100%. They're, they're within a half a mile to one mile on exactly the same elevation level. Yeah. So I know that they're not going to, I don't know the exact spot, right. but I know within half a mile where they'll be. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. by playing it safe in the wee early hours in the morning, just put yourself in an area that they're not, you know, that they're not going to be, you know what I mean? I always try to yeah. do that. Like yeah. some high knob that's facing South. That's, you know, that's wide open. There's no reason for any elk to be there unless they're feeding at that time in the morning, you know? Yeah. So just keep yeah. that in mind, but yeah, dude, that's the way so I'd go about it. Would you, um, in, if, if, Let's just say that I have a very hard time finding a spot where I feel is a good setup spot. How would you use the decoy? Would you put it on your bow or would you pin it up to a tree and then just try and, you know, get yourself into a good setup area close to that? Man, I've done it both ways. Um, in the shitty part about hanging it up is as soon as you go to advance to improve your setup, your decoy is no longer effective. Um, mm. That being said, I've never shot the decoy on my recurve. So I know that plays some factor with your depth perception and stuff. So I'm just, if you're going to yeah. take it on your bow, make sure you're shooting with it before you take Price it and do that. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I've definitely taken it and presented it, you know, and made it noticeable. And then, duck that some bitch away whenever the time you know mm. to to make them yeah. to make them try to search out that that visual that they had um yeah you yeah. know uh, but yeah i've done it both ways yeah. I, I kind of like the idea of 
having the decoy sort of propped just to the side of a bush or something and kind of peeking through the bush to confirm that they get that visual and then act like the elk walks behind the bush so that they can't see it anymore. I've given them enough to confirm the visual and then hopefully they'll come come on in. Yeah, that's exactly the way that you want to play it. And dude, when if you get a reaction, just remember they're always coming to the last point that you called. So position yourself if you yeah. call here and the wind is cutting across you, make sure you loop around to where whatever's going to come to that location, you can still shoot there, but you're not there for them to see. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, because they, yeah, they have an unbelievable ability to pinpoint exactly where that sound is coming from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the tricky part is that is that um, just that lack of undergrowth. You yeah. Know, it's, I think that's part of the reason why they're in there because it's the canopy is dense, so they yes. get the shade, the cool temperatures, but they can also see quite a good distance around them. Yes. So they feel very safe there. It makes a lot of sense. A lot of those major, major bedding areas are like that. It's almost like it's a mulch bed underneath. It's very wet. Yeah. There might be some moss and stuff, but it's, there's not enough sunlight to get through. And it's another reason yeah. is because it's just not on that southern side of the slope. It's probably on a, yeah. on a northwest or northeast facing slope or something um that just doesn't get enough daylight because of the geography yeah. you know what i mean um yeah but on the edges in the outskirts of that is where you start getting into if you get into some of that manzanita or some of those smaller growth yeah. pines those are the areas that you really want to try to call them into um those fringes because that's going to be you know, because if you get into that deep, dark timber, they can see a hundred and something, a hundred and something yards sometimes. Yeah, and they it, can. If yep. you can get them to come to those fringes, um, you're going to be in a lot better situation, dude, because it's yeah. just, yep. and, and especially with that frantic calf call, man, you can't go mm. wrong, dude. And, and, and yeah. when the whole herd comes running up, the bull can't do nothing but, but come in behind all of them because he doesn't want to leave those cows. So. I mean the the you know I've done this tactic okay, so here, several times that the bull is just in tow of the mama cows that are wanting to come save that baby. So here's a question: If you're cat lost calf calling and they're let's just say that they're all somewhat stationary or bedded down, and you're 150 100 yards and the cows all start piping off like come on over here come yeah. like, they're, like alerting that, the calf to where they will and then of course and then of course you can't run in so there's like a kind of a standoff right they're like okay well no we no, no. you lost come over here and yeah you're... yeah but it's a it's a distress almost okay it's more than i'm just lost it's frantically, oh, frantically, okay. come help me, please come help, come here, please come here. As soon as they answer me, I'm barking at them to come help me, please. I'm stuck in a hole. Um, something's going okay, on. So, I'm not. I'm not making. So show me that. So okay, do, here so it is. Do that for me. Do do, do do the difference. I want to see the difference between what you'd call a lost and a frantic, injured, yeah, calf call. It's a lost. You're reaching. Yes. You're trying to reach out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Hey, hey, is somebody there? You know, you can just picture a little, a little girl yeah. or a little baby or somebody yeah. like that. Um, you know, yeah. you can tell if somebody's. You know, it's right before that panic stage, but then you throw the panic yeah. into it. And if they answer, keep hammering it and keep hammering it and keep hammering it. Yeah. They're gonna going. they're going yeah. to and that's what's that's the whole problem that I think maybe the guys run into is they don't hammer it enough 
Because once yeah, you no, get that yeah. response, you need to be pleading to them to come save my life. Because think about th- think about if Talon was out in the woods, Joel, and yeah, he and yeah. he was out there frantically calling for you, you know, like what however it might may sound like whenever he's getting attacked by the hornets or the wasp, you know, that yeah. that's a different call for you for help, right? Like that That's different. That yeah. call any adult would go in to help Talon regardless, no matter what the situation, somebody's yeah. gonna come in there and help that little boy, little girl, whatever they are. And it's the same thing, like I'm you know I got. I just got bit by a freaking snake, and I can't go nowhere. Come help me, please, or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm being pinned down by a coyote. What? I don't know. You know, yeah, just yeah. when you present that, there's nobody in those woods that is an elk that can. That's just going to leave you over there to die. That's yeah. the way I look at yeah. it. Yeah, Hun- and dude, hundred percent agree. And I would probably, I would probably exaggerate that even with like, well, to add intensity, I'd like break shit and make it sound like this. The cough is like is hung in, up, in physical, shake a bush, physical distress. Yes, exactly. Stuck in something or being pinned down by a coyote, like you know something. It's exactly. Just, just cannot move, but it's freaking out. That's yeah. right. And be prepared. You know, yeah. mama's gonna come running in first and just hold, hold down, hold the fort down because yeah. they're gonna go in search mode all around you, and then you just need to be waiting for your prize bull because he's going to be in tow behind them um yeah yeah so just in- would you put a would you put a little like um more emotion like a yes yes absolutely and just remember, it's, a, I mean, it's when, a calf, not a cow. So don't you don't have to drop in those low notes. It's very sharp yeah. and choppy, and it's they they yeah. almost just have like a one note. One note will cut it off short. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I did this in New Mexico, and the whole herd came from private property, jumped the fence, come all the way up to me, all the way up to me. I said it right. Yeah. Like hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of yards to come. And I beforehand, I had been bugling and doing all my stuff, you know, throwing out all the stuff. And old big boy just kept them down there and kept them away from me. But then as soon as I made it sound like my herd moved off, then I came back in and I started my calf calls and my distress calf call, lost calf call, whatever you want to call it. And dude, it was less than, I mean, I mean, I worked them for an hour beforehand doing all my slow, slow play and all that BS. And then less than two minutes of calf calling like that, I had 20 herd of elk or 20 head of an elk within 60 yards of me and was just hoping to be presented a shot of a 340 bull, maybe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the, the beautiful thing, of, the beautiful thing about it is that you appeal to all elk. All of them. Yeah. And you know, this is what's what Joel, Joel Turner is such a, such an advocate for this, the, the lost um, uh, calf sound because it's uh, you, you just bring in any elk. Like it's just, it appeals to all now, um, whether it's an aggressive bull, a loving bull, like the, it's that, it's that parental instinct. Yes. Yeah. Now, Use this with caution <laughs> because, oh, yeah. because there There's is not a predator biggest. on the mountain that yeah. will not go eat up a tasty little calf elk. That goes for fox, yeah. bobcat, mountain lion, mm-hmm. bear, coyote, wolf, grizzly. I mean, you name it. Yeah. I mean, you might have crows coming in. You might have owls coming in. I'm not BSing, dude. Like, it brings in... Yeah every animal i've had uh i've had mule deer does come in looking for Mm. that um so just be be on point you know and be be ready for anything 
Um, but I, I really, (laughs) dude, I think that is probably one of the stoutest calls I've ever used in the elk woods. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never had the immediate response. Like I have with using anything else other than that call right there. It was unbelievable. The, the only, the only, so I, I kind of keep, um, I'm not, I'm just not big on cow calls anytime near the early season. So I, I kind of go with that location bugle because of the, the projection of the sound, especially sure. if it's going to be thick, thicker stuff, you know, just, it, it transfers through the woods so much further to Absolutely. try and get a response. But, but apart from that, man, this, this lost calf slash calf in distress and, uh, and raking, I think is just early season gold. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah. just keep in mind, Joel, now that group of elk that you're talking about, that the, the population mm-hmm. is kind of low, know that yeah. they want to be a lover before a fighter and you need, you need to yep. be a lover before a fighter. So by, by yeah. throwing that cow call out there, you might get a response from a bull that wouldn't respond to that bugle in that area because of I the th- low bull ratio. I I 100% agree with you Um, just because of the fact that there is a very low bull to cow ratio, but also from the previous experience from two seasons ago, I was bugling my way on on the trail um, all the way until I bumped into the elk. So they were standing there listening to me, never responded. The bull was not clearly not interested in me because he was one bull with all his cows. Why would he be? He was clearly not a fighter. And so... Okay, so yeah, this is so w- you know what's crazy is his cows were his cows were interested in yeah. you because they, they, they would have interested. Damn right they are. So that's why yeah. they stayed right where they were is because you kept moving towards them. They didn't need to tell yeah. you anything. They just assumed yeah. that you could smell the group of cows as a bull yeah. and you were announcing your presence as you showed up to them. Now, had so, had you have cow called, so, yeah, it, you might have got yeah. a different response. So you know what I what I'm going to uh, use more. Well, I say more. I've never, I've very seldomly used this call, but is a cow looking for other cows, like mm. a regathering type mew. Yeah, I'm gonna those longer. Yeah. I'm gonna really tr- I, give that a try. In this, yeah, area. dude, I love to do that in my tube early in the morning. I'll do one of these. Yeah, my reed popped a little bit, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and that that longer, like whinier sound sounds just it it just it it invokes that emotion of like, where are you guys? I'm yeah. over here. Where are you? Yeah, you know. Exactly. So yeah, that's a really good point, man. Yeah, I I think that I will probably hold off on the bugles in this area yeah. and just try and and try and get that bull to respond to another cow looking for the herd. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You would be so surprised, ways, so like, ways, yeah. um, there's been several times where I just will just pull up to a spot, and you always want to think about that near to far first, because you don't want to blow the yeah. heads off of an elk that might be there that you just, you know, you just hiked in a half a mile, and you're about to blow your first bugle. I always hit them with the first cow call first. <coughs> just like that, dude, and let it sit there for a minute. Even if it's just one. A lot of people like to try to do... Mini, you know, you can, but just one cow sitting up there. And then the next one will be like this. Yeah. And then maybe the, uh, the contact buzz, you know, and then if I don't so get anything, um, if I don't, if, if here's, give that a few minutes and then I'll introduce that bugle. And then you're liable okay, to have so the say, woods explode because now all the bulls that don't know who the hell you are know you have cows up there and they've never heard them either. You know, those are just, that's always okay, so shit that's going through my mind. 
there's i know this dude and there's so many <laughs> like there's really there's really not right or wrong it's just no I there's think not. the biggest thing is really trying to understand what mind frame those elk are in and what type of elk are in that little herd because you know if i think of that example let's say a lot of cows maybe one bull and you you do whether it's a regular mew regathering mew and you get all the not the bull you get all the cows pipe off hey hey here we are come on over come on over so and you don't have a cow tag you just have a bull tag my question then is like if this is a bull that's got all of his cows with him and you know where that those cows are now right because they've they've called you over they've given away their location um i don't know what you would do i'd love to know what you i would i would think to myself that if there's all those cows and it's September, there is gu- guaranteed there's going to be a bull with them, whether it's a spike or whether it's a big old freaking herd bull, there's a bull with them. So what I would try to do is circle around to cut that distance so I'm not you know, getting the wind right, of course, as close as I can and as- then just give a, a freaking loud roundup bugle to try and you know get up in that bull's face to where he doesn't have a choice other than to either run or fight like there's he's only doing one or two things what 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 other thoughts would you have to attack to approach that so i like the aspect of like okay so i know that there's cows there and i feel like there is a bull there if i know there's cows there i'm absolutely going to get within that 150 yard range like what you're talking about Mm. um but again I think I'm going to go lover before fighter. I'm not going to even give two shits about who or what that herd is. I'm going to be me and my cow. That's it. And I'm going to sit over there and I'm going to do a couple of a uh, couple of cow calls. And then I'm going to rake a tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So kind of like a like a yeah. breeding sequence. Yeah, kind of. But I'm just right now. I'm, I'm just. That's building just, up, just right? Displaying for your cow. I'm just yeah. displaying for my cow. That's right. And and okay. if there if there is a bull over there, you can just picture him immediately. Like okay, a cow, no yeah. big deal. But as soon as he hears yeah. the raking, you can see those ears going from like I'm in nap mood to going boom up, and they're turning yeah. to that direction. Okay, yeah. now you've just piqued his interest, but I'm just going to play into that. And then maybe, I, yeah. you know, while I'm raking, you know. <coughs> okay, and then a little. <coughs> you know, yeah, some pants and stuff like that. Yeah. Once it gets to the point where you start doing some, doing a few glunks on him, and start doing that, and then your pants, he knows what's going on over there. You're displaying for yeah. a cow, and you're starting to glunk and do all that, and it's just you. And it, next thing you know, when you let out a cow call again. He's going to respond to her. Yeah. If there's a bull, and then so, it's just playing that game. Every time he says something, he's talking to your cow. Okay. Every time you say something, maybe you're talking to your cow or you're talking to him to tell him to stay away. Right. You know what I would, you know what I would expect more from these elk here, just because I, I kind of know them pretty well is I bet that doing that scenario, he wouldn't say a damn thing. He would just he would creep on in there yep. to take a peek. Yep. He wouldn't say anything. Yep. So very, I would be very very, a, a very aware, you know, ears this is, up, just listening for a silent bull. Make sure your setup is correct. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. Make sure where he comes and he can see you raking or doing whatever you're doing, that the first time he can see that is whenever you can kill him. 
So he needs to be within 20 or 30 yards from you. So don't do any – that's what I was saying. On those fringes where it starts to get thicker and you're not into the deep, dark timber, you're on those fringes of yeah. them, those are the yeah. areas you're going to want to key in on unless you can get into some of that thick manzanita that's underneath that – you know, that's in that bedding area if there is any of that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're, you're, I got to really be good about the, set, the setup. The setup the is key, right man. There. Don't, I, I'm key. not even going to be making any calls at all unless I have a setup. Yeah. Period. And yeah. it doesn't matter. Like when I go to bugle and try to solicit a bugle or, or, or my elk response, I am set up. I am expecting mm. an elk within 50 yards of me that I can't see to come walking up to me. Does that make sense? So yeah, ev absolutely. every single time I make a phone a call, I make sure I'm not in the sunlight. I make sure I'm backed up against a tree. I make sure that, you know, the wind sometimes it is what it is, but I make sure that all those things are if I'm I came from this direction, I anticipate an elk coming from somewhere 180 of me right here, right? Mm. So yeah, at, yeah. at all times, and then I'll make my first cow sound, and then I'll do my louder cow sound, and then I do my bugle, okay? Never do I ever try and do that. And even, you know, I've had this happen to where I pull into a big patch of woods and I can see 150 yards, and then I bugle, and then next thing you know, 30 seconds come, goes by and there's a bull walking at yeah, me at, a, at 100 yards. And he can see yeah, right where I made yeah. the call from. You know, that's not yeah. a setup. That's not a good setup. No. Or you're just, yeah. or you're just willing to to get busted, you know, in that scenario, yeah. or get lucky. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So always try to be thinking very, about that. Very helpful, dude. This awesome. Yeah, just kind of kind of confirms a few things and gives me some other things to think about for sure. Um, but dude, I gotta run. Yeah. You know what's cool is I hit record and we've just did 40 minutes on Flatlander Friday. Thank you guys for listening so much. We just knocked out another episode, Joel. This one will be going in. Uh, shit. I, I could post it up next week. <laughs> Do a little cool. intro to it. Cool. Yeah, man. I think so. That Hell was yeah, awesome. dude. Yeah. Hey, that was awesome. dude. Enjoy was your great. day, brother. Enjoy your weekend. I guess I'll be talking to you on Sunday. On Sunday. Uh, I'll confirm a time. Cool. Awesome. Love you, brother. Love Thank you too, you, bro. Man. See ya. See ya. Aba mi zeto, akwete mayanda, ame ya sanza tina. Otomasi, kwata nitasi, kwata pema, ukuwa maukwa ishi.